It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas on Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. Welcome. Get ready as we open up Santa's very generous sack of gifts to lots of lucky subscribers right throughout December. So we are on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. Press like, subscribe, follow us too and you can win Christmas goodies from all these super partners on our show. Today it's about the man who took on wheelchair tennis, the real estate landscape, the purchase of refined petroleum, entrepreneur stories and visiting a house on a hill. Hold your breath in for a moment. Find your calm. This is the Green Embassy Homagama. Invest just 3 million rupees to reserve 0710 Prime Lands Residencies PLC. Here's a quick look at the week that was on Snapshot. Sri Lanka's exports hit the highest figure ever for an October with a record 1.16 billion US dollars. Sri Lanka's inflation hit a 47-month high of 8.3% in October compared to an equally high 6.2% in September. Year-on-year -year producer prices surged 11% in September, the highest since April this year. To ensure the continuation of Sri Lankan children's education, Selinko Life launched the single premium education protector. An endemic lotus believed to be lost has been found after 50 years near the Navalakanda forest in Kaluthara. Chief of the ICC panel of match referees Ranjan Madugale is the first in the world to officiate in 200 tests as he referees the ongoing Sri Lanka West Indies test series. Welcome to Prime Group Kaleidoscope and our news capsule. It's been a challenging year for the real estate industry, but there are some who have changed the game. Prime Lands Residency is a subsidiary of Sri Lanka's foremost property development magnet, Prime Group, posted a milestone revenue of 3.7 billion rupees in the first half of the financial year. Revenue in the second quarter surged by 86% from first quarter figures. I caught up with the chairman of Prime Group, Premaral Brahmanage, and co-chairperson Sandamini Pereira to check on the real estate industry's barometer. Mr. Brahmanage, what has the landscape been like for the real estate development sector in Sri Lanka? Almost all of us face uh, difficult uh, in uh, construction uh, uh, meeting schedules, uh, financial constraints uh, due to import control, increasing exchange rates and always uh, delays in getting approvals and bureaucracy. Adding to that, the current uh, global pandemic situation has affected our ability to achieve the, the fullest potential also. Uh, uh, main challenge I think the industry has uh, so far faced. Sri Lanka Real estate is the safest investment. And Sandamini Prime has posted some great results. What do you attribute that to? This emphasizes the stability of our portfolio as well as the effectiveness of our business strategies. To deliver an enhanced shareholder value, almost all our projects constructions are going on irrespective of the pandemic situation. Our strong brand appearance over the last 25 years has been our biggest forte. This has undoubtedly built a high level of customer confidence and satisfaction over the years, which has transformed into exceptional sales volumes over the last six months. The Colombo stock market gathered some momentum over the week. So, it's positive news. The old share price index moved up by 2.4%, while the average daily turnover was 7.9 billion rupees. The US, China, Japan and India have all agreed to release strategic oil reserves into the market, which led to WTI oil prices moving down and stabilizing close to 78 US dollars per barrel. 
And speaking of oil, the recent decision by the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation to shut down the Sapugaskanda refinery and purchase refined petroleum on the spot market has drawn some criticism. However, this seems to be the correct decision and I asked Fergus Kulasinghe, a highly experienced process and operations engineer working in the oil and energy industry based in the UK, if he thinks this is timely. Well, looking globally, refining margins are dropping. This means that the value of the refined products, petrol and diesel, is dropping relative to the value of crude oil. This means that there is a reducing difference between the cost of purchasing crude oil and refining it and the cost of simply purchasing the refined products on the spot market. Note that operating a refinery is expensive and energy intensive. So considering the global and local markets, as well as the country's foreign reserves, this decision appears to be very timely. Meanwhile, gold slipped below 1,800 US dollars per ounce. Rural entrepreneurs are to be given a boost. The Lanka Impact Investing Network and World University Services of Canada are building a storytelling platform showcasing case studies of entrepreneurs at grassroots level who have faced and overcome challenges. These entrepreneurs have been on long journeys and as the chairman of LIIN, Chandula Abhayvikrama says, their stories need to be told. What we are trying to do is through this platform, we will be creating an opportunity for multiple stakeholders, partners to collaborate with the entrepreneur. And the entrepreneurs time to time need mentors. They need uh, linkages to the market. They need to kind of really enhance the quality of the product. So we would be uh, creating multiple layers toward this um, uh, platform and then we hope to really scale it across to the whole island wide because uh, the entrepreneurs are not specialists on the IT or digital area, but they are specialists or the innovators of their solution. And that is why we would take their burden in order to create that linkages and partners uh, uh, through this program. The ultimate objective of this all thing is to, through entrepreneurship, create economic uh, revival uh, and enrichment to uh, the people of this country. Australia's Christmas Island took on the hues of Christmas as thousands of red crabs emerged from the forest for their annual migration into the ocean. Hold your breath in for a moment. Find your calm. This is the Green Embassy Homagama. Invest just 3 million rupees to reserve 0710 Prime Lands Residencies PLC. Next up, we have International Tennis Federation's Coach of the Year on Selling Life Talk and later on, find out what's in Santa's goodie bag. We are here to better your lives and champion your every goal. With 12 billion rupees worth of customer benefits in 2020 and a life insurance fund worth over 100 billion rupees, our strength is your strength. You focus on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Selling Life. Sri Lanka etched itself in the annals of tennis history recently when the International Tennis Federation conferred Jagat Balikala with the ITF Coach of the Year Award. This is the first time any Sri Lankan has received this extremely prestigious award in more than a century of tennis history in this country. And he got this award not simply because he is a phenomenal coach, but because of his contribution to the development of wheelchair tennis. Jagat has a long history with tennis, not only as a coach but as a tournament director and it was in 2002 that he began coaching wheelchair tennis. And that's not all. He has coached the wheelchair tennis Paralympian team for every Paralympics Games since 2004. He also served on the World Coaches Commission in 2010, the only Sri Lankan to do so. Today in our studio is Jagat Valikala on Prime Group Kaleidoscope, Selling Life. Let's talk. Welcome Jagat, good to have you on the show. Now you've been a tennis coach for decades and coached some of Sri Lanka's greats, but what actually pushed you into wheelchair tennis? It was ex quite accidentally. The Sri Lanka Tennis Federation had organized a wheelchair coaching program and the foreign lecturer came down to initiate the program. And when he came to Sri Lanka and there were, the Sri Lanka army had sent 300 disabled soldiers and he just said, I, I don't know what to do with it. So then I was there and then I, he called me and said that I can volunteer to help him. That's how the, it's all started. 
without actually being in a wheelchair itself. How do you put yourself in the wheelchair tennis player's shoes, so to speak? It, it was the first couple of weeks I was trying to explain and demonstrate different strokes. But then I realized that without being in a wheelchair, you can't demonstrate. So it took me about six months and I trained hard and I in the, in the wheelchair itself, I played and I beat all of them. Then I said, okay, now it's your turn to beat me. So you actually got yourself into a wheelchair? Yes, I, I was in a wheelchair for six months. I trained with the players. Besides the obvious challenge of being in a wheelchair, what are the other challenges that these wheelchair tennis players face? The, the main challenges the Sri Lankan players have is about the mobility because they are not in a wheelchair the whole day. All the other disabled, uh, paralyzed players, they are, they are permanently wheelchair players. So they are very strong on their mobility. That's my main problem. So that they, 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 are, they are 24 hours, their hands are moving. So that, that is the thing I'm working on now, mobility. So you have been coaching the Paralympian uh, wheelchair tennis players for since 2004. What exactly in all that time, how exactly has wheelchair tennis changed? The main change has not been the game, it has been the wheelchair. I can remember the first wheelchair, we weighed it when I was, we started, it was about 17 kilos and presently the new wheelchair is three and a half kilos. So I think the main change has been not the game, but the technology of the wheelchair. Do you think there are adequate facilities for wheelchair tennis players? Facilities are there, but unfortunately in this part of the world, we don't have tournaments. Now for this year in Sri Lanka, the Asian region, they have only three Sri Lankan tournaments, but in Europe they had more than 50 tournaments. So that's the biggest drawback I'm facing. The, I mean, not having international tournaments in Asia where they can get their ranking points. So what's next on your agenda? Where are you going with wheelchair tennis? Next is the Asian Games. We are hoping to get a medal in the Asian Games. Actually, last year we, we got funds from this. I was in the high performance squad of the sports ministry and we, we have got funds to travel. So I think that will make a big difference in the future. Thank you, Jagat. It's truly fascinating how you have helped over 100 wheelchair tennis players to reach their potential. And like you told me a little while ago, they're now, most of them are all married. How rewarding. That was the International Tennis Federation's Coach of the Year, Jagat Valikala on Selling for Life. Let's talk. We have lots of goodies to gift this Christmas and this week we are unwrapping our first round of Christmas goodies. Healing Island, which really has great wellness products, has 12 gift packs for the 12 days of Christmas and guess what? On Kaleidoscope, she gets a festive face gift pack and he gets Santa's date, each valued at 4,000 rupees. Our resident bookworm at Perera Hussain is gifting the super interesting book My Checkered Life by Nihal Jinasena and Harpo's cafes and restaurants are gifting vouchers from Bayleaf and Commons. All you have to do is subscribe or follow and let us know where we are visiting on Life in 60 today. What's up your answer to us? If you've already subscribed or followed, just send in your answer and the closing date for week one is Wednesday the 1st of December. Today on Life in 60, we are at a house on a hill in Halbarava. Literally a house on a hill, beautifully designed by architect Ashley DeVos and owned by the Piersena family. It has three bedrooms, it has amazing service and even more amazing food. And the good thing, it's just one hour away from Colombo and brilliant for some R&R &R because of the 360 degree panoramic view. I asked Irandati Piersena how this house actually came to be. The story of House on a Hill began in 1993 when my father, late Lal Piyasena, purchased a 45-acre rubber estate and decided to diversify it. The house was initially intended to be the estate bungalow uh, and it was designed by renowned architect Ash Divorce. It took them eight years to build the house as it was a complex project where the hill had to be excavated. And while they were excavating the hill, a big rock with yellow and pink hues came up and our architect decided to use it to build the house. So this house is literally built by the rock from the hill itself. And even the entrance has been designed in a way where you feel like you are borrowing into the hill. And once you climb up the stairs and go to the first level, you will be greeted with 360 degree views of mountains from one side and the Colombo city skyline from the other. 
So let's catch up next week with Santa. Until then, here's our kaleidoscope takeaway. Whoever is happy will make others happy. <laughs>